Hey, true believers, Chris Matt coming at you with an action figure that I'm squealing with excitement to finally have. This is the McFarland Toys DC Multiverse Gold Label Parallax Hal Jordan Green Lantern action figure. I remember reading Emerald Twilight back in the day and seeing Hal Jordan become evil. Oh, it drove me nuts, but uh, him coming back to full form was always the exciting part with Jeff John's Rebirth, which we'll get into in a minute. If you guys want to pick this figure up, I'd say first and foremost, check with your local comic shop and see if anybody has traded it in. If not, then I would say keep your eyes peeled on Targets and Walmarts, because I looked on Big Bad and Dark Side, nothing. This, again, was just one of those serendipitous moments where I was grocery shopping, went down the toy aisle, saw this, the only one, and I was like, yep, yoink, Scoob. So yeah, I definitely grabbed this. And as you can see here, looks awesome. Gold label, 22 points of articulation. McFarland Toys, Parallax there. Side window, Doohickey Mabobber there. And then I like that they actually kind of tried to recreate the imagery from when Hal destroyed the central, uh, or should I say absorbed the central battery on Oa. And uh, yeah, we'll get into all that here in a second, but just a very gorgeous product shot there course right there parallax green lantern emerald twilight if you guys want to know the name of the story arc nothing on the bottom so with that said let's get parallax out of the box and get a closer look at him and here's parallax out of the packaging and so far i cannot complain this is a very well sculpted figure beautiful all around there's maybe one one <laughs> let's just say one slight gripe that i do have with that figure what is that? Let's get him off the stand and get a closer look at him. So the seeds of Parallax began in the reign of Superman, which ran through the various superbooks between June to October of 1993, when Coast City, Hal Jordan's hometown, becomes nothing more than a crater. In the ruins of Coast City, Mongol creates his engine city, hoping to make the next war world here on Earth. And then, Hal comes back to Earth realizing his hometown's gone and through sheer strength of will defeats Mongol. However, that came at a price. Hal's descent into madness is finalized during Emerald Twilight, running through Green Lantern issues 47 through 50, which was January, through March of 1994. Jordan, driven by grief, wants to recreate Coast City using his power ring but he's forbidden by the Guardians. So this leads Hal to wipe out the Green Lantern Corps, taking out all their power rings, kills you know the Guardians, and snapping Sinestro's neck. Then realizing what he's done and there's no going back, he steps into the central power battery and absorbs all of the Green Lantern energy. He emerges as Powerlex. Now, as sad as this story is, one little antidote to it is this is also the first appearance of Kyle Rayner, which we'll go over at another time. Behind the scenes of all of this tragedy that you're hearing, this was to shake things up, according to DC. This is why we had the arcs of the death of Superman, Nightfall, and of course, they, just, they wanted to sell books and get people to care about their characters competing with Image. Now, as Hal continued to be parallax and kind of a pain in the butt for the Justice League, in one last act of heroism, he sacrifices his life to reignite the sun during the 1996 final A Night event and receives a hero's funeral. Now, not fit either for heaven or Hal, Hal, Hal serves as the new Spectre. So check out the 1999 Days of Judgment art for more info. Then... Jordan is resurrected during the 2004 Green Lantern Rebirth. It's revealed that the destruction of Coast City proved instrumental in allowing the entity of fear, known as Parallax, take root in Jordan's psyche. Parallax chose Hal at the request of Sinestro, who faked his death during Emerald Twilight. Parallax is revealed to be the yellow impurity in the central battery, which was why the Green Lantern rings initially were weak against the color yellow, and also why Jordan had white streaks in his hair. So there's some backstory and suggested reading for you on Parallax. Now let's talk about the figure and the accessories. 
So to get it out of the way, of course, we have the obligatory DC stand, which, of course, if you are uh, like to pose on a shelf, those are always helpful. It comes with a trading card, and I'm thankful now that we get an artist rendition instead of someone else's action figure photography, which drives me up the wall. So I'm thankful for that. And then here's the back for a read-up, so I'll give you a close-up so you can read it at your convenience. Now, I have not seen these type of effects with any DC character yet. You know, we got those kick-ass constructs with the uh, Emerald Dawn Batman. Not Emerald Dawn, what was, oh God. The evil Batman, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my, I think it was called Emerald Dawn or Emerald something or other. But these are great and they fit in his hands just like what the uh, multiverse fire effects do. So that's cool, you get two of them. And the green is a really nice effect, especially when you properly light that, that's gonna look great. So those are welcomed. And then of course he comes with his own central battery which looks awesome and old school, as it should. So those are all the accessories that he comes with. Very beautiful pieces, thankful to have them. Now as for Parallax, formerly Hal Jordan himself, the one glaring thing, like the head sculpt in and of itself is, is gorgeous. I mean, they got the flesh tone right, the mouth right, the mask looks great, of course Hal's brown hair. But what kills me is even though this looks semi-realistic and did a good job, is if you remember the early Green Lantern comics all the way up until Final Night when he was still Parallax, he always had the white streaks here above his ear. And that was just one of his dominant traits for years and years until after Rebirth when uh, Johns explained that his hair was whitening because he was infected by Parallax. The only thing that this figure has that kind of relates it is they sort of put it here in the back, which is not too bad, but being a long time lantern reader, that, that kind of bugs me, but I'll, I'll let it go. The cape, gorgeous stuff. This is a soft, soft plastic. I would have rather gone for a uh, bendy wire cloth cape, but at least with this one, it's very bendy and you can do what you want with it. Just warm it up and I'm sure you can get some awesome poses out of it. The armor looks as it should from the books. Let me back it up a little bit so you guys can get more of the gorgeous look of this. Always like the design here. I'm glad that when it leads down, you know, the silvers and blacks here look good, leading down to his green gloves, and then they give him translucent hands. Now, the one thing that irritates me is this is supposed to be a gold label. And, you know, you know we get awesome effects, beautifully sculpted figure, but why? What is it that we get one closed fist and one resting hand? This is where Hasbro kicks McFarlane's asses. You know, you'll, you'll usually get a couple of sets of hands, you know, like open, closed, fist, what have you. But when you just get one and the other, that is so damn irritating. But I'll, I'll let it go because the translucentness and just the way that it looks leading down like that, that just looks gorgeous. The uniform all around. Beautiful, and it looks like they didn't shirk on any painting. Everything looks the way it's supposed to. Silver looks good, green looks good. The way his boots look, absolutely awesome. Ripples and the capes look great. I love the shoulder pads here leading up to the collar. Just adds that parallax look that he had from the 90s. Now as for articulation, not bad either. So his head goes down that much. Again, warm your figures up before you do this. When I took him out, I could barely move his legs because the paint had dried and stuck in that pose for whoever knows how long he was on that shelf. And because of the collar, you do have a little bit of trouble. And he has a little bit of play this way, so you can kind of mess with it to get him to look up at least that much. You can look that way, that way. And again, as I said, he has play, so you can murmur, 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 like that. Now I'm glad that these shoulder pads are soft plastic, so you can get the arm to just about go 360. You just have to kind of move it off to the side. So that way, that way, that way, upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, yay, wrist spinny spinny, and then of course the ball joint, which I'm glad is relatively hidden so it's not ugly like on that Doctor Strange or Harley Quinn figure. 
He does bend here and here, so you can kind of get him to go down about that much. And really far back. The only problem is, of course, is you're going to get that gap. Nah, it is what it is. So you can spin him there, there to get that monstrosity look going on. So at least you have that nice range. Legs can go out that far, 90 degrees that way. And then, of course, the soft butt flap, kicking Hasbro's butt in that regard. Now, uh, Hasbro, you may want to also be taking some notes here. So if you guys look, you're thinking, well, I, I don't see no uh, cut here on the thigh. I'm liking that McFarland's hiding the uh, thigh swivel up here instead of having that glaring cut like on the Legends. So um, Hasbro, you may want to start taking notes on soft butt flaps and hidden thigh joints there. Just saying. And then nice ratchet for a double joint and knee. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Foot go up, foot go down, foot ratchet, ratchet, and toe pivot, pivot. Yes, I'm turning it into a song. Oh, I need to warm that knee up again. So for the paint apps, spectacular. Um, the hands, I'll, I'll let it, I'll let it go, I'll let it go. <laughs> and the articulation for a bigger character, it's pretty damn impressive. I'm really loving this figure. But again, it could be biased because I love Green Lantern. I thoroughly enjoy this parallax figure. I was reluctant to pick him up, but I'm glad that I just said, you know what? Let's get him. Very beautiful. I love that the cape is not a hard plastic. These effects, oh my god, the effects, the lantern, everything about it is awesome. My major nitpick with this figure, as I said, is in the, as I pointed out, they do kind of have the white stripe, you know, kind of the, the dry brush in the back of his hair. But if you go back and you read it, his white hair always went back over across his ears like, you know, an aging older man. So to kind of leave that out for me is glaring after I've re read Emerald Twilight quite a few times and the older Green Lantern books. Putting that aside, though, this is definitely a figure you want in your collection, especially if you are a huge Green Lantern nerd like I am. Speaking of which, McFarlane, we're still waiting on that Kilowog. <laughs> But with that said, guys, if you've enjoyed what you've seen on this figure, please first and foremost support your local comic shop and pick one up. I'm thankful that I found the one that I did. If you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate it if you take a moment to hit like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that fancy little uh, Blackest Night Bell next to subscribe, that way we can continue to upload content. You guys will get notified. And come to the channel, and we love talking with you all and hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, photo slideshow coming up next. Hope y'all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading and happy hunting, true believers.